Hi everyone, welcome to the second commentator game on our channel, Nimbasa City. Today we'll be looking at another game from 2011 of the Majestic Dawn to Call of Legends 2011 pre-rotation format. The first one rules are unrestricted, um, which were the rules for the Swiss nationals at the time. On the left we have Gyarados, and on the right, we have Magna Rock, Magna Zone Prime, and Regirock. Gyarados does 30 damage times the number of Magikarp in the discard pile, so with one Magikarp in play and the rest in the discard, it can do a maximum of 90 damage. With an Expert Belt, it does 110, but it does give up an extra prize. And the way you cycle it is using Rescue Energy, or Pokemon Rescue, and other sort of recovery cards and broken time space to evolve immediately. It's a very um, it's a very fast deck. It uses a lot of Uxi junk arm uh, communication to set up real fast. And um, yeah, uh, it also uses Crobat G to get some extra damage. Mesper to block abilities, well, Poke powers, which are very relevant in this matchup. And, um, yeah, um, that's about it. Um, it also plays a bunch of Super Scoop of Poketurn Seeker to recycle those abilities such as Mesprit, Corbeji, and uh, Uxi. Um, the deck sort of relies heavily on Donks to, to win. Well, it doesn't rely that heavily, but it does make use of it uh, comparing to other decks such as Magnarok, which depends on a slower start, or Valgar, which depends on also a slower start. Um, on the left, we see my first turn was just an impersonate for Collector. Looks like none of the cards in my hand were playable, so I just get out three Magikarp, two ready to discard off the Regice, and one ready to bench, one to bench ready to evolve. Um, on the right we have Magnarok. It does 50 damage times the number of energy you put in play into the Lost Zone. So you have Regirock, Regirock with its Regicycle to accelerate energy. You have Chansey to heal and mess with numbers and also to d help discard energy for Regirock. And you have Super Connectivity Magnazone, which is the one from Stormfront, I think, which helps you um, which helps you accelerate lightning energy to the active. And thanks to Chansey, um, normally you would take 1 damage, but the Chansey can heal that off immediately. Uh, it's a stage 2, to, so to help it set up, it uses Spirit Tomb, Darkness Grace, and Broken Time Space. And um, yeah, it's got a huge number of HP, uh, 140, plus the Expert Belt, 160. And it's got a huge number, um, it's got really well scalable damage. Um, really doing 100 damage is enough to knock out a lot of things, 152. And it's really easy to get 3 energy in play with 2 Regirock or a Regirock and a Super Connectivity Magnezone, plus the attachment from the hand of turn. Um, the main weakness of the deck is it's super dependent on Poke Powers. So cards like Mesprit and Power Spray are really good to just sort of shut down either the entire an entire turn or just just part of it. Um, yeah. Um, generally, the matchup is heavily in Magnarok's favor. Um, as I mentioned before, it's got a huge amount of HP and. That's, um, yeah, it can easily one-shot um, Gyarados, and Gyarados can't one-shot it back. So um, pretty straightforward there. Uh, what Gyarados would need is a big turn using Mesprit and a lot of Corbat, just to take one big knockout, and then for the opponent to not have a recovery. But that is difficult to pull off, 
So um, looks like Magnarok's first turn was just a collector for a second Spirit Tomb. So that way, my Reggie move would not give me ability. Uh, would not give me trainer cards. And a Reggie Rock ready for Reggie Cycle, and a Magnemite that just became a Magneton thanks to Darkness Grace. And it looks like I used. Uh, impersonate, getting out um, another collector. Um, I don't see it in the discard though. Oh, yep, yeah, looks like I forgot to discard it. And bringing out an Uxi, the fourth magic card ready to discard, and an unknown question mark, which helps draw a few extra cards during the game. Um, I have used the unknown question mark, but I find that the bench space is really tight in this deck, especially in this matchup where you really want to use cards like Crobat G and Mesprit and Uxi to get a fast start. So having that um, so having that card on the bench really doesn't give me much. It helps me draw one extra card per turn. Uh, yeah, I'd rather have an Uxi level X or just a regular Uxie get a huge burst. And looks like my opponent also gets a slow start, just draw into Darkness Grace, into Magnezone. The thing about Magnezone though is that it is really powerful. <laughs> uh, as I mentioned before, it's a huge tank, deals a ton of damage. Um, yeah. Um, this this Magnezone it's enough to carry probably like the first half of the game. <laughs> and um, looks like my own question mark was priced, so I dropped an Azov, unfortunately, to get that out. Um, really sucks to have to use an Azov to, well, just in general. It's something that you really don't want on your bench, and it's not something that you want to spend your super scoop up on. And because of the Azov and this unknown question mark, I only have one bench space left. So. Um, Probably gonna switch out this list. Take out the stable eye, which don't do much. Take out the unknown question mark. Yeah, looks like I'm backpedaling there. It is not what I want to do. Um, as I mentioned before, it's bent space is super important. And the deck does run cards like warp energy. So Um, so moving that stable eye isn't really going to be an issue, but it looks like I'm going for yet another, uh, yet another impersonate. I wonder what I could be going for there. Looks like a baby search. Um, my hand seems to be quite large, so getting out an Uxi, not really what I'd want to do. Uh, maybe getting out a Mesprit. That way I could get a Mesprit into attack. Um, but my opponent, see, definitely has an energy in hand. Definitely can return that KO. So, not sure if um, taking an attack right there is worth it. Um... Yep, he attaches to the active disc return retreats to discard. And discards a spirit tomb and another fighting energy. Attaches the expert belts. Uses that magnet to draw poke power. Gets to fill up his hand back up to six. What an insanely strong ability. And yep, that is his discard pile. And looks like I'm just making sure that he didn't attach a fighting energy that I discarded from the hand. That it was a different fighting energy since the poke since the poke power specifies. And he benches another magnemite. Looks like he drew into it and takes the knockout with one energy thanks to the expert belts, dealing 50 damage plus 20, 70 damage enough to knock out that 60 HP basic. And Looks like I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. Uh, I have a lot of options here. What I'm going to need for sure is a rescue energy. 
and to not attach that expert belt that I have in hand uh, since it is completely useless to me here oh okay I just did that um, by by attaching that I'm giving him two free prizes and the prize trade could go I attack twice he attacks once sort of like a non ex versus ex prize trade and then I try to win the game through taking one big knockout but uh, a one hit large knockout and it looks like I'm playing a luxury ball getting out that mesprit and looks like I'm going to try to block abilities uh, force him to attach an another energy from the hand and lost zone all the energy that he attaches and then that way I might have a chance to come back looks like I'm using that unknown question marks poke power it's going through my discard seeing what I have and it's a combi so definitely not what he guessed um, yeah the idea of the card is that you run like five or six different types uh, between psychic, water, and metal with Diaga level X, Diaga G level X, Combi, um, Sableye, and then your opponent will never guess the right type. But it's. Yeah, like I said earlier, you draw only one, one extra card, it's not amazing. And. Looks like he is, as I predicted, going to Lost Zone. Oh, only two energy. Two energy. Does that... Yeah, that takes the knockout. Um, yeah, like I said earlier, it was not a good play because he would have to Lost Zone that energy. He would have to Lost Zone two energy anyway without the Expert Belt. So Expert Belt and Expert Belt, thanks to weakness, it the prize trade is in his favor. So I should have just attacked for Nighty. And then attacked for Nighty again the following turn with uh, Pokemon Rescue and everything. Um, looks like my hand is still extremely large. I would like to use an Uxie for a good amount of cards, but. But no, uh, I just have too many cards in hand. And I use that unknown question marks Poke Power once more, but I don't know how I'm going to recover from this. If I do take the attack, then I'm going to have to drop a Broken Time Space, which lets him set up a return KO. And if not, then my opponent will just get to take one more knockout. So it looks like I'm going for that Azov, gonna get that probably unknown question mark out if I had the broken time space in hand. Yep, yeah, there it is. That way I get to retreat and take the attack and just attack. But um, that rescue energy is really getting in the way. The card that I was considering putting in this deck is, um, okay, here comes down a super scoop up. I should have played that scoop up first. Um, that way I wouldn't have to drop two, bench, well, one bench Pokemon to get out that unknown question mark since I would have just brought back the mess for it to hand and then, and then benched it. And it looks like I'm going to Uxie set up for two. But I missed it. And looks like I might have to attack with Uxie. And if I have an expert belt in hand, then I'd be able to do 40. But uh, again, no bench space to. Oh, here comes a Seeker.
Oh, yeah, gonna retreat first. That's a good plan. Um, Seeker, bring back that my spirit, be able to use that pocket power once more. Um, he brings back a spirit tomb. You know, useless card. And then that way I get to reuse that mess spirit. And I promote that as elf, but you know, again, that as elf shouldn't have to be there. It's, um, yeah. But uh, he's going to take the knockout on that. It's going to be sort of a quote unquote worthless knockout. But uh, a knockout nonetheless. Attaching to the active. Can't use any poke powers thanks to that mesprit. And um, with just one energy, he's going to take the knockout. And now he's at two prizes with that Sable Life from the beginning, this card, and the Mag and the Gyarados with that Expert Belt. And once more, if I d hadn't played that Expert Belt, then he would only be at three prizes versus me at, let's say, two prizes here. Uh, if I get a Crobat, then I'll be able to take this knockout with that Baby Search, uh, since it's got 160 HP and 150 damage. And there we go. I'm gonna take those two prize cards, and then if I have Gyarados in hand, then I can take another knockout. Um, it doesn't matter what he promotes because I can always just Reggie move. So, oh, no, you can't play that communication. There's a spirit team active. Uh, Uh, don't really know what to do here. Um, yeah, I shouldn't be able to play that. Um, I should at least have to ready move first. Um, I don't know what the last two cards in hand are, but... What? Yeah, that definitely should have been a ready move and the communication. Um, to take the knockout. Uh, but, oh well, not much I can do here. Plus, with the Reggie move, I would have taken a much more meaningful knockout. It would have been either the Magnemite, uh, which, no, he was not going to pr promote that Magnemite, or the Reggie Rock, which would be good because it would block him from accelerating energy. Uh, of course, he does play two Magnarok, but still. And it looks like he's trying to figure out what to do. Uh, sort of all the cards in his hand strewn about on the table. Um, if he has candy, he can just candy into Magnezone immediately. Um, and it looks like he has broken time space and super connectivity Magnezone in hand. So, it's gonna attach. Oh. It's going to rare candy into that Magnezone. Drop a broken time space, and that broken time space helps me as well. But it might just be a little too late. Too little too late. Since I'm at four prize cards and he's at two, I uh, so many misplays on my end. And uh, so many suboptimal cards as deck choices. Um, I would really need to have to go over the list once more. Um, yeah. Get some more aggressive draw. See what cards would be good to add. And looks like... Boom. Um, he's able to use Regi uh, Regicycle twice. Accelerate two energy. Attach from the hand. And that brings him down to one card in hand, and with, there we go, Broken Time Space gets to evolve into Super Connectivity. And this is just how powerful the deck can be. It's you play all the cards in hand, you discard all the cards in hand, and then you draw back up to six. And he still hasn't used a supporter of the turn. His supporter is a search supporter. It's a collector. No need to draw more. 
and it's going to get out that chancy sort of try to mess with the numbers on my end um it doesn't really do much in this matchup to be honest but it's good to discard energy and put them back for ready cycle and also for super connectivity um yeah also if he takes the one damage from super connectivity is at 130 me with an expert belt does 110 plus two poke turn uh lets me reuse the crowbat twice and he's gonna go for i don't question mark and spirit tomb as the two other cards probably just discard fodder and he's gonna drop a communication on the un unknown queue and he's probably gonna get out of blissey here yep thanks to that broken time space just gets to evolve right immediately and you know his plan of attack now is just super connectivity and nurse call to heal that ten off and then attack and he only needs to discard two energy loss zone two energy which he can just from the bench and that way he still has that magna zone ready to attack the next turn with enough energy really really a fast aggressive deck not much to say there um here comes a super connectivity nurse call and takes the knockout with those two energy and i promote corvat it's got free retreat broken time space is in play oh top deck that rescue energy one turn too late but the deck does play a ton of ways to recycle cards recycle pokemon there's only two gyarados in the discard if i'm not mistaken so with one rescue energy and then something like a luxury ball or a communication or baby search would be able to get back that gyarados And here comes the junk arm. Probably gonna be for that. Oh my god, discarding two seeker. That is a rough discard. Um Don't really know what to say there. My opponent only has one prize left. I have about three. I would really need to take this knockout right here, right now. Um Gets out that collector. Gonna be for an unknown Q and Uxie of course. Just one Uxie because I don't have the bench space for another. And this is another issue. Um, if I had not played down that unknown question mark, I would still have a second spot for an Uxie to sort of recover late game. But um, yeah, definitely a card I would cut. Definitely not a card that has given me a lot. Um, sort of like Judge Whistle. Um, and I draw seven cards uh, looks like I hit that rescue Pokemon rescue so I can bring back the Gyarados and what I would need here is I don't even know what I would need here Reggie move not going to do much for me <laughs> Gonna discard those two broken time space, and I mean, he's probably just gonna put up really anything. Doesn't really matter because he can just attach and take the return KO on the following turn. Um, he definitely still has energy in the deck, since uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure I've seen an energy in his hand too. So, yeah, the game is pretty much over at this point. Not much I can do. Uh, looks like I'm pondering over what my options are. But uh, regardless of what I do, there's just going to be return KO, take that last prize card. So, I use a Reggie move. And he 
puts up a Reggie Rock retreat. It's got 90 HP, perfect for the knockout. And do I attach this expert belt? I think I would. If he only has one prize card, then for sure. Um. If he has two, then yeah, there we go. And take the knockout, take that one prize card. And I'm not sure if he does have the energy in hand. He definitely has no energy in the discard. But um, yeah, there we go. Last on three energy, take the knockout. And that's basically how the matchup goes down. Um, sorry for all those misplays. Still, uh, I'm not a veteran of this format or anything, and my opponent definitely is. But, um, yeah, that is how the deck goes down. I hope you enjoyed that. Please, uh, subscribe, comment on how you think that I could do better, any improvements I can make, and, uh, like if you liked it, dislike if you didn't. And thank you. I'll see you next time.